everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome to another edition of Crypto with Kamal. I'm your host, Kamal Hubbard, here in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., at the illustrious Howard University, the site of the sixth annual Black Blockchain Conference. I'm here in collaboration with the Internet Computer Protocol, North American Hub, and with my guest, Jamari Peterson. It's, good, it's great to see you. It's almost like a family reunion coming here and uh, seeing you after so many years at all these conferences. But what brings you here today? Yeah, this is the sixth um, Black, Black Blockchain Summit. Um, I've been coming since the very first month, so it's an opportunity to re-engage with people that um, I've met over this time period to, uh, to talk a little bit about what I've been building and, and to learn about where, where else is going and the direction of this space and really just encourage and enjoy each other and, and like you said kind of like a family coming back together right it's, it's a good get together yeah i mean a, a lot of new faces and um a lot of old faces too so uh in that way once again it is like a family reunion but it is a good way to meet some new people look at some new projects see what's going on that said well what are you here to present to build and share with uh the other folks yeah well over the past since i last came um, I built a protocol, uh, a DAO, decentralized autonomous organization, or an avalanche, um, called Snowball. Right. And Snowball, um, it, as part of the ecosystem, we launched a variety of smart contracts. Um, and within those, we had about 300 million in the contracts that we deployed, mm -hmm. um, serving, the, serving the various users that, that came through that network. And from that, I gained a lot more understanding of some of the weaknesses and issues of adoption in, in this space. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we saw was there's a fragmentation issue. Mm -hmm. um, all the various protocols and things you want to interact with the digital assets, right. you require to go to a different website, a, a different source, you go to Twitter, Discord, and, and you have to um, agglomerate all this information just to make a single decision about what you want to do with your asset. Right. So we so I started working on FiHub as a spin out from that experience. And FiHub is meant to be a way of more easily accessing, discovering the various digital assets and web free assets that might be of interest to someone mm -hmm. and then allowing them to execute the transactions that they need to access that, you know, the, the yield or the opportunity that's associated with it all from, from one place. So it's, it's, in some ways it's an aggregator, but it's an aggregator of the experience of web, web three on top of the, on top of the native smart contracts. Wow, amazing. So, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm here with the Internet Computer Protocol. What are you, what is your familiarity with ICP? Yeah, so, so ICP, I mean, I, I hear a lot of uh, talk, talk about it in regards to implementation. Majority of the work that I've, I've been looking at uh, from a, a data layer has been around uh, actually um, uh, uh, IPFS, honestly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I am interested more to hear about where ICP fits in since I have that paradigm. Right. Because when it comes to decentralized tech technologies, it, it's not always just blockchain implementations. Right, right. It, it, it's, a, it's the variety of data structures and methodologies of, yeah. of aggregating and bringing everybody together inside of a common framework. Well, you know, I'm new to the Internet Computer Protocol, yes. but I've been studying, and what I've learned is they have this type of technology called chain key cryptography that allows to allows ICP to interact with other blockchains. So not necessarily interoperability necessarily, but they've integrated the Bitcoin blockchain onto their blockchain. And so now you can uh, create wallets on Bitcoin using ICP. You can send and receive Bitcoin uh, on ICP. So. Other services like IPFS are also encompassed on ICP hmm. to remove the traditional IT services like cloud hosting. So uh -huh. things like Azure or AWS would be eliminated and all that would now be placed on chain. Uh -huh. How it's done technically, I can't explain that to you right now, but I will very soon. Uh -huh. And it's something worth checking into, but you know, um, I'm very happy to have you here and uh, just wanted to allow you again to just talk about some of the other stuff that you're working on. Yeah, I um, mean, so aside from I have also support um, a lot of um, artists. Mm, okay. So, and, and that's from the NFT non fungible token perspective. Right. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm really into algorithmic art. Mm. And algorithmic art encompasses AI art, right. as well as generative art. Mm -hmm. And generative art is uh, typically code-based art where, where where somebody is actually programming how that art is going to resolve into an image. Right. Um, typically, they, they add some, some randomness into that factor so that each piece can be unique based upon their, their vision of 
of how this thing should, should turn out. Right. Um, and, and I really think those those two spaces are very, very interesting because you actually have this ability to bring those things on chain. When it comes to AI art, you can put your, your training data that, that you use, hash it, and have that on chain. So you can have the history and the provenance about the, the sources that are used to, to create the art. So therefore, therefore, it's not just about the artist creating it, but also they can compensate or provide a means of, of demonstrating their the, the contributions that, that brought the artist to be. For, for, for generative art, it's interesting because you can actually mint on chain, like where the actual process of the minting is actually connected with with, with the holder. So mm, I, me and okay. the holder might create a, create a piece, right? right? But then when I mint it, I'm adding the randomness that's actually uh, going to generate that piece. So now it. I participate in that process right. for that piece of art, art to be made. Wow, wow, man, that's on another level. So, <laughs> yeah, so. But very interesting nonetheless and you know i want to thank you again for stopping by the booth and being here at the black blockchain conference thanks so much sir and uh we'll be talking to you i'll be seeing you soon at the next conference i'm sure but absolutely in the meantime don't just make it a good day make it a great day with crypto crypto with kamal and we'll see you on the next one